So we've just been at the Melbourne rally for free speech against the Miss Disinformation Bill and also against, it was just released this week, the proposed Victorian anti-vilification laws. So we've been hit at the state and federal level. So enjoy our coverage. I will include the links uh, to all of the, the Miss Disinformation Bill, the facts you need to know, and also about the proposed Victorian anti-vilification law. So enjoy our coverage. You know, also enjoy our interview with some of the uh, speakers and attendees. They burnt the bill in New South Wales. Woo! But here in Victoria, we live in areas like there's something else. Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. Hey mate, how are you? I'm good, Where thanks are we today, Richard. Mate? Where are we today? We are at the Melbourne Free Speech Rally against the Miss Disinformation Bill and also against the Victorian government's new proposed anti-vilification laws, yeah. which... And we're opposed to all of that, aren't we? Because it's all a bunch of bullshit. And it is aimed at people like us. Well, probably it is, isn't it? You know, we're the kind of people who are troublemakers uh, on, on the internet uh, sphere, you know, uh, exposing the conspiracy and all that kind of thing. So it's good to see a nice turnout. And the weather has been kept away. So, uh, you know, we support uh, all this and we support all the uh, various you know, right wing, left wing, libertarian parties coming together who uh, believe in freedom of speech. You believe in freedom of speech, don't you, Tim? I'm a free speech absolutist. There you go, me too. Yeah, it's a I don't believe in hate speech. I don't believe in any of that bullshit. I don't believe in vilification. I think it's all nonsense. And, um, you know, I guess this is part of... Uh, you know, people speaking out on that, that's a good thing. So are you going to interview people here today? Yep, we had uh, Jordan Dipbop, the Libertarian Party Senate candidate for Victoria, chainsawed the bill. Ah, he chainsawed the bill. That's a bit of a, that's a, bit of a Malay move. You know, <laughs> he, he gets the chainsaw out, mate, you know. And we can do the Trump dance too. As Tom Petty says, we're not backing down. Tom Petty, that's right. Don't back down. So I'm here with Libertarian Victorian... MLC, David Limbrick, uh, w one of the speakers today, and who, well, I, you first brought the news about uh, the Allen government's proposed uh, anti-vilification laws, uh, which, uh, so we've got a fight at the federal level uh, with the misdisinformation information laws now at the state level. Yeah, so uh, we're facing uh, attacks on freedom of speech at all levels in Australia, at a state and a federal level. Uh, we've been concerned about these anti-vilification laws and the potential impact. Uh, one of the things that they're going to do is effectively criminalise what they call uh, severe ridicule or serious contempt based on certain protected characteristics. Uh, I'd say it's not too late uh, at the moment because there is no bill. They're still going through the consultation phase. Uh, I read the glossy PDF they put out yes. and it's absolutely chilling. It is that chilling. So likely to cause hatred, severe ridicule, three years in prison. Yeah, and also um, other serious emotions, and I'm not even sure what that means, but um, yeah, they say anything that incites hatred or other serious emotions, and your guess is as good as mine as to what that actually means. Um, I, I said the other day uh, the the government incites serious emotions in me all the time, and uh, I'm not sure. And uh, what did you think of the turnout today? Obviously it was... Uh, hosted by the Libertarian Victoria, but also Warren Pickering from One Nation spoke. Uh, it was just a shame about the weather. Yeah, well, it has, it's only just started raining now, so that's good. Look, I was really happy with the turnout. Um, I think it's good to show that there are people that are willing to stand up and, and fight for free speech, that we're not just going to roll over and let it go without a fight. And we showed today that we're organised enough to put on a fight. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it was sort of a bit of a freedom movement uh, reunion as well, obviously for an important cause, a lot of familiar faces, which is always lovely to see. Yeah, like uh, there was a lot of, lot of people I've met before um, from long time past and some new faces that I've never met as well. But I think one thing that happened during the pandemic is a lot of people got very concerned about their freedom being taken away. and. Uh, they want, they want to be able to stand up and fight for it. And we saw, you know, a group of those people here today. 
And I know you're going to keep doing it in the upper house of Victoria's Parliament. Uh, they're cleaning up the, the, the chainsaw of the missed disinformation yes. bill now. Yes. Uh, so we'll wrap it up. But uh, thank you for speaking today and also spearheading, uh, representing all those who want freedom, freedom to reign in Victoria. No worries. Thank you. So I'm here post the Melbourne Free Speech Rally with the Libertarian Party Victorian lead Senate candidate for the next federal election, uh, Jordan Diplop, who just, uh, you won up it today, uh, wasn't <laughs> a, a burning the Miss Disinformation Bill, but chain soaring through it. Uh, vive uh, Liberato. <laughs> vive le Libertarios, yes, we're uh, channeling Malay today and um, last week at New South Wales, the, uh, the team there decided to do a ceremonial smoking ceremony and burnt a copy of the bill and it got my imaginative juices and, and brain whirring away and this weekend we decided we were going to take an axe and take a chainsaw to the bill and uh, really channel Malay. Uh, now you have an interesting life story, you're a, a reformed a criminal, uh, you're still eligible to run for the Senate? Yeah, so at the federal level, Section 44.2 of the Constitution provides that you're able to be a candidate as long as you're not subject to sentence, which means awaiting sentence for a criminal offence, or actually serving a sentence, that is being in prison or being on parole or CCO. So uh, as you saw with Pauline Hanson and Darren Hinch, um, a period of uh, imprisonment in the past is no barrier to candidacy. Now, as the Founding Fathers said at the time in the constitutional debates before Federation, they said, look, We've got a great strong media. They're undoubtedly going to put the screws to people and determine whether they're, they're fit to be um, holding office. And we want to leave that to the media and the people to make up their minds. So we stand on the shoulders of giants. We had some pretty forward thinking founding fathers. They said they, d they didn't want people to be eternally punished for their past wrongs. And uh, Samuel Griffith is like one of my favorite Australian founding fathers. He actually said, need I remind you gentlemen that uh, half of you are rebels against British home rule in Ireland. So. Uh, you know, Australia has a bit of a unique take on federal candidacy. We've both chosen to stay here in Victoria because it is worth fighting for. There's the atrocious uh, proposed anti-vilification laws that were just released uh, this week. Uh, so they, they still want to make their Labor government Victoria worse, but we want to save it. Well, let me put it this way. I think that I think the next 10 years, you know, you look at what's happened in the last week or 10 days with the more redeeming defamation proceedings, you want to see what the modern state of the Liberal Party is here in Victoria. And I think anyone who's watched that court proceeding knows that we're in for another two terms at least of Labor government. Um, Victoria is already in the grips of a, a long socialist winter that I think is going to be even longer. And I think that the one good thing about that, the bright, the bright light at the end of the tunnel, um, is that I think Victorians will be the first Australians to really understand what the cost of socialist policies are. Victoria will be Australia's Argentina, and that means that Victoria will be the first place to have a Malay emerge, because nowhere else in, in Australia will people truly be able to understand what the nature of the socialist state is and what the real cost is of voting for these parties again and again. Will it be you? Will you be Victoria's Malay? or? Well, the Senate used to be the state's house, and I'll be a senator for Victoria, hopefully after the next federal election. Uh, funnily enough, I'm unable to run as a state candidate uh, under Victoria's much harsher candidacy laws, so there is that. But um, look, I hope to create a beachhead at the federal uh, parliament in the Senate. Um, I hope that I'll be elected and that many other libertarians will join me in the upper and lower house. And I think that in Victoria, Victoria is the first state where the libertarians really may be called on to actually take on the mantle of opposition. I think the Liberal Party may fail here. Um, you know, I hope that they don't for the sake of Victoria, but I'm preparing for the possibility. Well, good luck with the Senate election, whenever it is. Who knows when Elbo will, will call it. I, I dare say it'll be as far away from now as possible. I think yeah. in the words of Keating, they'll be waiting on the corners with baseball bats for him. But we'll certainly be seeing more of you uh, closer to the campaign. No worries. Thanks very much, mate. Also, here is Damien Richardson, a demo cancelled actor. I don't want to say that I've been cancelled necessarily. You just say that, Tim. It sounds good. It's probably good for good copy. But uh, every now and then I'll still get dusted off when I go for an audition, mate. Oh, that's good to hear. I, it's, it's, I'm saying it as a term of endearment. That's good. <laughs> it's good to be cancelled standing up. Yeah, look, I've got a, um, a, uh, a documentary called um, Becoming Demo coming out. So I think for being cancelled, it probably suits it. It's probably good for it. Good traction, good publicity. I thought today, though, was you know, I'm, I came along. I'm sure that's what you're going to ask. So I ask a question for you, and then I'll answer it. Um, 
you know, and everyone talks about the importance of freedom of speech as like a theoretical concept inside of the framework of this being a wonderful democracy that we live in. But no one actually questions the idea of what a democracy actually is anymore. Are we actually living in a democracy? Is this a democracy? And if it is, why is there massive waves of immigration changing the nature of the country that I grew up in and so many Australians grew up in and so many Australians miss, but there were never any political representation for that voice? So why doesn't anyone ever question that? And we didn't hear any of it today either. And I look around at this group, at the demographic of a mainly sort of white, waspish class, and um, no one mentions that. Well, how come it's not representative of the Melbourne that I walk around in every day? Are these other people not interested in this so-called democracy that um, we have? Is that a question worth asking? I think this is probably worth finding out why they didn't ask me to speak today, because they probably don't want anything too spicy. Just, I just, it's vanilla. Excuse the pun. It's well, vanilla. Well, I know that it's what you've been speaking out against recently, and it's the other big crisis that is facing Australia and a lot of those who are coming in uh, they don't like free speech they come in and demand everyone be totally say nothing negative ever and of course multiculturalism is the law can't say anything that mm. uh, uh, some cultures are better than others yeah, and it's not their culture too, so why would they care? Like if I went to live somewhere else too, would I necessarily care about that place historically? Would I even necessarily ever understand the gravity of what it would be to understand another place that I was living in? What it really meant to be of that particular space with that particular history? No, no I wouldn't. So is it any surprise? No, it's not. And what consequence is there as a result to the culture of that occurrence? what consequence is there and there's serious consequence but of course you're not allowed to mention it all these people will talk about oh my god oh my god what a threat to freedom of speech but the threat to freedom of speech is already in their imaginations and they're already stopping themselves from speaking about these things anyway whether this bill passes or not so really metaphorically this bill has already passed in their spiritual understanding of the world that they're living in well it's means that things are just going to get worse. There's a Victorian proposed anti-vilification law, three well, years course. in jail for incitement to hate or severe ridicule, or uh, five years in jail for a threat, whatever that is. So would I be able to say the things I just said once that bill has passed? Who knows? Who knows what? They're all subjective. That's that, and that's the other thing. Yeah. Mm. Well... <laughs> I know that you're, you're going to keep speaking out no matter what the law is, and so are we. Well, we'll see what happens, uh, Tim, do you know what I mean? We will see what happens. Uh, I'll come visit you. <laughs> Where am I going to be? Mickleham. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wherever the new Gulag is. Oh, okay. Are they yeah. going to build another one? Who they've knows? That... a perfectly good one they haven't used yet, surely. Yeah. Even, the, even the, considering the level of waste, they're not going to build a new one unnecessarily. Oh, thanks for chatting thanks, with Tim. me, and thanks for coming. Cheers, mate. Good Hopefully on. they'll ask you next time to speak. Oh, we'll see. So I'm here at the Melbourne Free Speech Rally with one of the attendees, Adam. How did you think today went? Yeah, it was very interesting. Um, interesting to see a diverse group of people, uh, and it's a group of people that I am sort of haven't had a lot to do with previously. The Libertarians? Yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, I think it's it valid in that. Well, it's relevant in that all of us, regardless of where we come from and what we stand for, and that we know what freedom is and we know what freedom isn't. So it's good to see how different people express that in different ways. Well, we've got some shocking anti-free free speech bills in the works, mm. uh, such as the, well, we already know, this was, today was about uh, the missed disinformation rally against it, but also Victoria's yeah. proposed anti-vilification laws, which I'm not sure if you've read the proposals, but they're to like totally the subjective. Of, yeah, I don't like the sound of it. I think... Uh, what one of the speakers, or a couple of speakers spoke about was that it's all part of a global initiative to a form of uh, tyranny to um, keep us all quiet and obedient. Um, I myself follow the trans issue a lot because I think it's a... Yeah, I think I've seen you at uh, the Let Women Speak rallies. 
Yeah, I, because um, I think it's a tool used by globalists and the influence they have is filtering down to state and local level. Well, the Let Women Speak events, they could be yeah. illegal under Victoria's proposed yeah. anti-vilification yeah. laws. Yeah. Uh, we had detransitioner here today, Mel Jeffries. Yes. Yes, I've met Mel a few times. Um, I think uh, it's imperative that society as a whole wakes up to the malignant influence uh, that this type of legislation is um, trying to impose upon us. And the trans issue, from just one perspective, is um, symbolic or of uh, the way in which they are trying to exert power on us. Yes, soon it will be unlawful to call Roxanne Tickle a yeah, man. Exactly. Just what an absurdity. You know, like, two-year-olds know the difference between a boy and a girl. So if they can get... If they, if they can get the general population to shut up and obey on such a basic fact as that, then they can basically do whatever they like. Right. Kindergarten cop is a hate speech now. Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. Yes. Um, it's, uh, I think it's, you know, rallies like this are important because they provide plenty of examples and opportunities for people to communicate and connect with each other on something that's very very important and um, hopefully it'll I think to a degree it's already hitting mainstream like the media is starting to wake up you know they're building just across the road here I've been attending the Moira Deeman case in the federal court and it's highlighting the yeah. whole issue. She was here today. Uh, she didn't speak, yes, uh, with, her, with her husband and, and children. Uh, so uh, that was good of her to attend. Uh, yeah. uh, I wonder if John Pesciuto will use the associations here. <laughs> there might be somebody here with some sort of views he doesn't like. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's get over it. You know, like it's, <laughs> people do have differing views. Um, and I think there's a... I think this, you know, it was the first thing that was mentioned here today that um, we all don't agree on the same things and that's okay. You know, we're all basically trying to find out what's really true and good and it's, it's a complex business. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Uh, Moira is amazing. Like, you should have spent the last three weeks sitting in that building and now she's out here today also. Amazing, but there you are. Her lawyer is also awesome. <laughs> Yes, uh, shredding the Bushido and his allies on the, on, the, on the stand. There's still, I think, another week to, to go. Uh, they've got, from my understanding, they've got three more days, which are uh, submissions or summary of both cases, and that'll be uh, starting on the 22nd of October. So, yeah. Well, thanks for coming today, Adam, and speaking with me. Well, thank you for asking very interesting and relevant questions. <laughs>